It's that time again. These are the top 10 4K Blu-rays of 2023. Let's get into it. What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for the overwhelming support on my top worst 4Ks of 2023. Today we're gonna be more positive because at the end of the day, we love movies, we love home video, we love sitting back on the couch with our 4K setup. No one chomping popcorn around us, no one talking, no one on their phone, but us zoned in on the movie watching a great 4K disc. And that's what today's video is about. Let's praise 4K Blu-ray. And to preface, the reason why we do these videos is to say, good job, guys. Keep up the good work. Because when you do good work, we'll praise you and we'll buy them. When you do a terrible job, we're going to crap all over you. So today we're going to be praising some 4K Blu-rays. This is an unbiased top 10, by the way. I'm a small YouTube creator, small enough to where no one reaches out to me. So I've never been sent any 4Ks from any studios. I am extremely picky on certain aspects. If I see certain things, it's an automatic mediocre for me. So you're not gonna see me like, oh yeah, I had all these problems, but all these problems, but all these problems, but it was okay. No, we're gonna go down to the nitty gritty. Also, some of these picks may not be your cup of tea. Let me know down below, what are your favorite 4K Blu-rays of the year? And let's start this discussion with number 10, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Like its predecessor, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is another demo-worthy animated 4K disc with Dolby Vision HDR10 enhancing the experience. These vibrant colors truly stand out. The black levels are fantastic looking, deep and inky. A lot of detail is retained, showcasing the dedication and talent of the animation team over at Sony. So many nuanced details such as clothing and on costume stitch and patchwork. The webbing design on Miles's mostly black costume is visible without HDR crush. This release also features a stellar Dolby Atmos soundtrack that displays the fantastic sound design. All the sound effects are unique and demo worthy. From punches and web thwips, explosions and many more this is an overall 10 out of 10 disc that is currently on sale at Best Buy US. So if you're in the US, I think you can get this for like $14, $15 for those who are interested. All right, at number nine, this was very surprising because previously I only watched the remake and I hated that movie. But I remember Celeste de la Cabra was like, ah, oh, this is like one of my favorite movies. So I was like, you know what, if they like it, I'm gonna check it out. So we got number nine, we got The Wicker Man on 4K Blu-ray. Now I'm specifically talking about the UK release as I was unable to pick up that beautiful Lionsgate 4K Steelbook, but I was able to pick up the UK set over on Amazon.uk. But anyways, I was stunned by how gorgeous this 4K transfer was. The set comes with three cuts of the films, but we'll be discussing the director's cut just so that we don't take up too much time. Uh, but according to Studio Canal, I'm quoting this guy, these guys, this restoration was scanned in 4K by Silver Salt Restoration UK from the original 35 millimeter camera negative. A second generation 35 millimeter inner positive produced in 1973 was used to replace small sections with unrepairable damage in the original negative. The additional footage was sourced from 35mm prints, which are the only known sources for this material. Color grading and restoration were completed by Silver Salt Restoration UK, who dedicated over 500 hours to fix physical damage to the 35mm negative. You see me grinning? This is what's supposed, this is what you do. Manually clean and remove dirt, sparkle, and scratches. The color grade used was previously approved by Robin Hardy and replicated here. And it shows this is what a 4K restoration of an older film should look like. So much love and care was put into this 4K presentation, looking clean and crisp without DNR. This is how you do it. I'm so befuddled and boggled that these billion dollar corporations have all this money and they don't really care, but they don't put the effort in. But these small companies like Silver Salt, congratulations guys. You blew it out of the park. 
blew it out of the park, blew it out of the water, and it looks absolutely fantastic. You can tell that this 4K was a labor of love that took a lot of effort to look as good as it does. The Dolby Vision doesn't over contrast things, but keeps it realistic and helps shine upon the natural beauty of the scenery. Black levels look inky and don't crush detail. For fans of the original Wicker Man, this is like a no-brainer. If you can get your hands on a copy, of course, that is. So the only reason why it's like this low on the list, even though it checks off so many boxes that I love, is that it's pretty hard to get a hold of. You're either dishing out over 100 bucks to import it, or for a mostly sold out steelbook if you're in the US. Looks alone, this is a 10 out of 10 disc. Again, this there is the same old 2.0 track that has been featured previously, but it is good and it does the job, keeping the integrity of the filmmaker's vision without the producers overly mastering and ruining the film's intent. All right, some more deep cuts. Number eight, we got Aero Video's UK 4K release of Naked Lunch. Naked Lunch was a 4K that I got on a whim because I heard the restoration was actually done in my neck of the woods. I think it's like the, the place that they did it was like 25 minutes away from my house, so that was pretty cool. But being that Cronenberg is also a Canadian, I gotta show some Canadian love. And that this film is, you know, it got some great reviews also, so going for it, I decided to pick up this Aero box set, and boy, was that a good decision as this director approved 4k disc is bloody fantastic another movie made on film ported to 4k that wasn't meddled with ai or given dnr lending to some great detail to be shown from standard affairs like you know facial details looking absolutely fantastic clothing detail looking great of all the like minute stitch and details being visible to the fantastic creature effects the smoke looked beautiful when people when characters were smoking cigarettes and you could see the smoke and you can see it dissipate and stuff like that but you can still see the little bits of it in the air that looked fantastic and that's usually when you can tell if it's a bad 4k transfer because the, those little minute details if it's not done properly and if it's not ported on a really high quality disc you're gonna get pixelation you're gonna get boxings you're gonna get all these things but here it was clean it was crisp and it looked absolutely sharp the fantastic creature effects look fantastic showcasing the talented people behind who worked on the film and that's why we love 4k is because we're able to showcase the talents of filmmakers and the talents of people who are passionate about making movies which we all love I will say though there is a yellow tinge over the entire film but honestly the Dolby Vision doesn't kill any of uh, any of the other primaries such as blues or reds so you'll get a yellow tinge over it but you'll still be able to see people's skin complexions and those kind of things unlike one of my worst 4ks that had a yellow tinge called cat's eye that UK 4K, that extremely killed it. Here, it's more of that kind of Matrix vibe, if you know what I'm talking about, where for the longest time, Matrix just had this really bad green tinge to it, and it killed everything else. So when they did the 4K, they still had that green tinge because that's what they were going for, but you're still able to see all the primaries. It's like that here as well. A 4K upgrade worth upgrading over the already great looking Criterion Blu-ray disc. Black levels are inky without any detail crush and white levels are pristine. You know, never looking overly gray or anything like that. The audio features a pretty good 5.1 and 2.0 mix that services the film well, but I personally prefer the 5.1 as it opens up more of the dynamics to the sound design, giving more room for things like effects and every, uh, the dialogue and the music score to really rest in the mix instead of being a bit overcrowded. But you really can't go wrong with either soundtrack, so it just depends on your setup. Number seven, I don't think I've heard anybody mention these 4K discs, and that is the beautiful 4K steelbook releases of The Mandalorian Season 1 and Season 2 on 4K Blu-ray. I have to mention these Disney releases because they came out out of left field. No one was expecting these to come out on 4K with people downright hating on Disney for not doing so. How many times were you scrolling through Bluetube and seeing all these people, oh, heck Disney, Disney's never gonna do this, Disney sucks, and Disney's like, yeah, okay, bam. Here's a beautiful 4K release with a fantastic steelbook set. The Mandalorian holds a special place in my heart for reigniting my love for the Star Wars universe. And realizing that since shows rarely get the 4K treatment, I should let go of that dream. But Disney heard us fans and gave us these stunning 4K releases. 
It already looked great on Disney+, Plus, but it was boosted to 11. You know, with all those streaming qualms removed, all the aliasing issues and pixelating processing and banding, they're all gone with this 4K disc. The detail is sharper than a dark saber. HDR10 presentation is what takes the cake here. Enhanced by HDR10, the colors emerge with a newfound richness and boldness. The primaries are more balanced and lifelike, yet evoke a sense of wonderment within the color palette, giving this feeling a very realistic fantasy. It gives you that feeling that these places are real, which is what gives life to any piece of Star Wars media. The black levels are noticeably inkier and more robust than their streaming counterpart, which help make the viewing experience of these fantastic shows 211. The reason why it's lower on this list is due to the fact that this is only available through a quite a pricey steelbook set, which makes this a lot less attainable for a lot of people. You know, because I feel like the, this this set could have been like a baby's initial, their first rendezvous into the 4K. A lot of people have PS5s and Xboxes, so they could play 4K discs on that, and it would look fantastic. And they'd be like, oh, maybe I should get more 4K. So it, it's a bit of a shame that they they didn't, they don't have a more accessible version. Like I know a lot of certain movies, they come with a big, big exclusive, like big box set, but they also give you like a standard release that's like maybe like, you know, $50 cheaper. So I wish we got something like this with a nice slip cover and everything, but it's fine. So yeah, anyways, let's get on to number six. And that is Titanic on 4K Blu-ray. A new scan of the original camera negatives catapults this classic disaster romance into the modern day. Despite initial skepticism and concerns about James Cameron's treatment of the critically acclaimed blockbusters after T2, Titanic on 4K exceeds expectation. The transfer is a 4K enthusiast's dream, showcasing incredible detail in these fantastic sets and in the practical ship effects and all these things look fantastic. Period accurate clothing looks fantastic, lifelike facial details, and even the CG elements still look pretty good to this day. Even from a film made 26 years ago they blend seamlessly into the masterfully rendered final product which is this 4k disc thanks to the meticulous filmmaking in consultation with the special effects supervisors that were on set but i will say though while cameron added digital noise reduction which is noticeable in some instances uh, with like a haloing effect around edges and certain things, it doesn't really detract from the overall enjoyment of the detail from the transfer. No one looks waxy, no one looks like a clay figure. You still get a lot of the detail. The Dolby Vision support enhances the film's visual appeal, offering an improved balance of contrast and brightness. The 2.35 by one image benefits from a vivid whites, sharper specular highlights, and captivating black levels, creating a cinematic allure. A lush spectrum of colors, vibrant blues, dynamic reds, and improved variation on past in pastel hues. Along with the natural facial complexions and a fine layer of grain, make this UHD debut of Titanic extraordinary. But let's also talk about the audio. On the audio side, it's also fantastic. The use of dialogue, effects, and music without a hitch or sounding too busy is, a f is fantastic. Each component finding its own place within the mix without muddying levels. The sound effects, particular during those climactic sinking scenes, are immensely immersive, making you feel like you're on the Titanic itself. Dialogue is clear and never sounded too quiet or too loud. And I will say this track is mostly front focused the surround engagements add dimension and immersion and the Atmos overheads intensify underwater sequences, delivering a stunningly immersive 4K experience. The audio mix in this 4K release of Titanic is dynamic and some of the best in terms of depth and clarity. All right, in at number five, we got one of the my favorite movies of all time on one of my favorite 4K discs of all time. We got 12 Angry Men on 4K Blu-ray. Kino Lorber delivers another standout release that more than justifies the upgrade from the previous Criterion version. While it may not match the abundance of bonus features found in the Criterion edition, the 4K image of 12 Angry Men is simply outstanding. The image now appears more vibrant and authentically presented in its original theatrical aspect ratio of 1.81 by 1. 
thanks to a new 4K digital intermediate. Notably, the grain structure has received a more significant improvement compared to the Criterion release, where it felt like more like image noise than natural grain, which is fixed all in here. You know, and this enhancement is likely due to the minimal compression on this 100 gigabyte dual layer disc. The 4K breathes a new life into this classic, making it a must watch with spot on details and clothing, stubble, facial imperfections and textures. For fans of this film, this becomes a demo worthy addition to your collection. And given that 12 Angry Men is considered some of the greatest films of all, one of the greatest films of all time, and having such a demo worthy transfer is a highly appreciated and essential possession for those with a proper setup. Additionally, the Fantastic 2.0 track has undergone further improvement, eliminating any signs of age related issues like hisses, pops, and crackles. Watching this absolutely stunning 4K release truly feels like experiencing this movie in theaters nearly seven decades ago. All right, at number four, we have All Quiet on the Western Front. I am a history buff and I love me some more films and when this movie came out on Netflix I watched it immediately and it's a fantastic movie and then when I got the 4k disc whoo this disc caught my attention with its remarkable Netflix image quality the Netflix like when I watched it on Netflix I'm like this looks fantastic I know a lot of people say oh don't watch it on Netflix it looks like whatever and you won't get the full experience but it still looks fantastic but the pro so when I heard it was getting a 4K, the prospect of an uncompressed 4K 100 gigabyte disc ignited my imagination with all of the possibilities. The Academy Award winning visuals shine brightly on the 4K UHD Blu-ray, presenting a substantial upgrade from the Netflix stream. The intricate details are incredibly sharp and vibrant, offering outstanding close-ups. The textures of weapons, individual hairs, beard stubbles, and clothing are all stunning. This intensely visceral anti-war film unfolds with scenes of gore and viscera, showcasing fantastic practical effects that provide an immersive experience. Delving into this chaotic world we called World War one. Despite common concerns in modern day films of this caliber where CG elements can sometimes compromise image quality, the 4K Blu-ray surprises as CG elements maintain their crisp 4K quality throughout, enhancing the cinematic journey. This film's somber color palette may appear challenging for Dolby Vision, yet it excels in delivering impressive black levels without sacrificing detail. The contrast of rich and deep red of the blood against the subdued color palette of the mud and the grass and, and the dirt leaves a powerful impact, similar to the distinctive skin tones that evoke a unique atmosphere, akin to the Matrix's green tones again, albeit replaced with a blue hue, a blue hue, there is a blue hue, on uh, in all quiet western front but you're, it doesn't really ruin primaries or details now the audio experience on this disc is unparalleled featuring a superb dolby atmos track the numerous battle scenes immerse the audience in the chaos with bullets whizzing past mortars shells and explosions providing some of the most subwoofer testing sequences the outstanding sound design is complemented by the Dolby Atmos treatment. This created an auditory pleasure that captures the essence of the film. Anyways, to delve into every remarkable aspect of the audio would take all day. Anyways, what I'm saying is this is probably one of the best war films on 4K, and you really need this in your 4K collection. And it's also higher and less because you can get the really nice big digi book set or you can get the subdued uh, 4k which is also really cheap on amazon on uh, best buy right now all right number three i was surprised not many people talked about this on their top 10 list and we got john wick chapter four you know this had to be in the top five i experienced this film initially in the dolby cinema on the big screen which got me incredibly excited especially considering the stunning visuals that range from scenes reminiscent of Lawrence of Arabia to those resembling a Frank Miller graphic novel. Transitioning to my OLED screen, the film did not disappoint. If you're even remotely into action films and have a 4K setup, this is a must have for your collection. It's a no brainer. Shot in 4.5 to 6K and rendered in 4K, the visuals 
are impressively sharp during intricate details like facial features, pores, beard stubbles, and textures in clothing. The diversity in fabrics from wool to cotton to linen to tweed to leather, it's all discernible and you can tell each individual uh, each individual clothing type, cloth? It's not cloth, but each individual clothing type. The presentation is a delight for those who appreciate finer details with no signs of interlacing, aliasing, or degradations during fast paced scenes. You know, sometimes when it gets so hectic, rolling shutter can be a thing, but thing it's not here. Moving on to HDR, it delivered as anticipated, offering demo worthy sequences with, with vibrant neon lights and rich color schemes, especially in those Japan scenes. Oh my God. The Dolby Vision enhances dark scenes, revealing more detail than in a projection setting. On my OLED, the inky black levels maintain clarity without sacrificing any detail. And the color balance is well preserved throughout. The Dolby Atmos track also adds another layer of intensity, immersing you in the action with unique sounds for each guns, impacting reloads, the realistic car noises, uh, you can hear the, each shell casing hit the floor after and you go ding, ding, ding. You can hear the tinniness of it, but the bassiness of the initial shot. It's just a treat for audio enthusiasts, although it may warrant a warning for potential noise complaints. In terms of bonus features, the release is packed, satisfying fans and earning a 10 out of 10 for its technical experience. This is undoubtedly a demo worthy disc and a must own for 4K enthusiasts. All right, let's go. At number two, we got Babylon on 4K Blu-ray. While Babylon may not be the most easily approachable film, given its like lengthy runtime of over three hours, I personally appreciate its depiction of the time period and the outstanding score, not to mention the stellar cast. But when it comes to the 4K disc alone, it is an extremely visually striking film that is absolutely mesmerizing on 4K Blu-ray. Shot on 35 millimeter with a native 4K Dolby Vision transfer. Yo, <laughs> the picture quality is flawless, offering a level of detail that completely immerses the viewer into the film's world. The colors are vivid, the contrast is sharp, and the deep blacks contribute to a cinematic experience that is unparalleled. Paramount wisely opted for a 100 gig disc on the 4K release, ensuring a solid bitrate with no compression, artifacts, or modulation. The Dolby Atmos soundtrack is exceptionally impressive, utilizing every channel to create a true cinematic experience within the confines of your own home. For those with the necessary setup, this will undoubtedly be a treat for audiophiles. The 4K edition of Babylon comes with a variety of special features too, with providing an in-depth exploration on the film's production from behind the scenes documentaries to commentary tracks. If you love this film, you will get a full 4K setup. You will get a four, full 4K uh, package. Like I know the angry video game nerd made a whole thing about why Blu-ray sucks because there's no bonus features. We'll show him this 4K and he'll be silent. Babylon on 4K Blu-ray is an indispensable addition to any home theater collection. The stunning picture quality and immersive audio contribute to a visual feast while the compelling story and talented cast make it a must watch for fans of drama and period pieces. This 4K sets a reference standard in terms of quality. All right, at number one, you probably guessed it. We got Oppenheimer on 4K Blu-ray. Of course, what else would it be? <laughs> what can I say that already has not been said before? It's Christopher Nolan on 4K, a masterclass in filmmaking made on the highest quality film stocks, including 70 millimeter IMAX, lens for one of the best 4K discs I have ever seen. Now, the movie may not be for everyone, but you can't deny how beautiful this 4K disc looks. Take it from a person who actually saw the 70 millimeter presentation here at my local theater. This is as close, if not better than watching it on actual film as the black levels on my OLED are extremely deep. And in a dark room, this will immerse you in all of its glory. Also, you won't have annoying people who bring their significant others who don't give a shit about the film eating chips and annoying you, okay? This is how it should be seen unless you're in a room full of like film nerds like me and we're all just sitting in quiet not even snacking just like looking at the film in its glory 
a remarkable and crisply rendered masterpiece for the 4K format. Oppenheimer's incredible attention to detail elevates every single frame. Texture is always showcased, whether it's close-ups at a distance or even in mid-ranged and far shots. It achieves perfection beneath a subtle yet consistent grain structure. I was a bit anxious being that compared to the an IMAX setup, I didn't know how well the home viewing experience would be when it compared to the audio uh, affair, but especially after previous experiences of Nolan films having muddying dialogue, uh, that can be hard to hear. And after learning it was only a 5.1 mix, I had my doubts, but this is like top tier demo worthy 5.1. The way audio is used within the film, it conveys anxiety and pressure, which is felt in the mix. While not as pulse pounding as in an IMAX theater, this 5.1 mix is still as robust and monstrous as can be. Audio levels can be a bit annoying, going from like really quiet to like, rah, like ag aggressively loud sequences jump scaring you. But that's what it was like in the original IMAX 70 millimeter presentation. So you can't really fault it for that. But I will say you, I guarantee you will be grabbing the remote, increasing it, decreasing it, increasing it, decreasing the volume. If, especially if you're watching this at night, this is a perfect 4K disc that is a must own for video files and audio files alike. Do I wish that there was a Dolby Atmos? Sure, but did I felt like I was missing out on like, oh damn it, like I'm not getting a full experience? No, as I was never left disappointed by the audio experience whatsoever. Not to mention that there are hours, hours of bonus features on the Blu-ray. Like I think th there's one documentary that's like 90 minutes long, just like which one featurette was 90 minutes long. Making this disc like prime example of physical media done right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Universal. You had some stinkers this year, but you also had one of the greatest 4K releases of like at least top 10 in my opinion. So that was my list for my favorite, my 10 favorite, 10, this is only five, my top 10 favorite 4K releases of 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below if I missed out on anything. Again, couldn't put everything on the list. I know a lot of people loved uh, Avatar, but I just don't really, like the visual aesthetic of Avatar. So when I watched it in 4K, it looks great. It's just like same with, uh, what's it called? Marathon Man, not Marathon Man. The Gemini Man. I, I like, it look, technically it looks great, but I really don't like high refresh rate um, filmmaking and it's not really a thing that I enjoy. So uh, yeah, so again, let me know down below what were some 4Ks that you really, really liked and that were now in your top 10. So. Let me know down below. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I've been Mason for the Mockbuster YouTube channel. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time on another episode of the Mockbuster. Please have yourself a good day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this. Please stay safe and God bless. Peace, cheers, and long live physical media. See you guys. Peace out.